Temperatures just through 70 degrees. It is a picturesque day in mid-September. You can feel that brisk autumn air coming just around the corner as we are just about ready for the Washington Redskins and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Home opener for Washington in the midst of a very long extended losing streak. Our game being broadcast in Spanish where available using the SAP button on your television. There is Gus Bradley, second year head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Last time he was in this stadium, the wild card postseason game against the Skins two years ago. And they, they battered and bruised RG3. And there is his 47-year-old counterpart making his first home appearance officially as new head coach of the Washington Redskins last three years as the offensive coordinator with Andy Dalton and Marvin Lewis in Cincinnati. And both of these teams, Solomon, trying to avoid that dread 0-2 start here in week two. Yeah, you have uh, two coaches who really essentially trying to build a program with two different teams. Washington Redskins, the more veteran team, but who had coach Jay Gruden trying to build a new culture and trying to return the winning ways to our nation's capital. And then the Jacksonville Jaguars, a very young team, as of course their head coach has said, they're on a race to maturity, according to Gut Bradley. There is Andre Roberts signing the offseason to help with the dreaded special teams unit of the Redskins last season. You saw Josh Stobie. Jacksonville won the toss. They defer. And so the Redskins and Robert Griffin III will have it. As we are ready to go here at FedEx Field. Second straight road game for the Jaguars. Blew that 17 to nothing second half lead in Philadelphia last Sunday. Redskins a 17-6 defeat in Houston against J.J. Watt and the Texans. Booming kick by Scobie. Roberts taking knee and here it comes. Robert Griffin III. Who uh, really struggled in the preseason. In fact, looked awful. Last Sunday, second highest completion percentage in a single game in his career. But Solomon just could not get the ball down the field. And they didn't do a good job of protecting him either. Yeah, and every time you hear about Robert Griffin III, and he's got to become a better quarterback from the pocket. But this offensive line has struggled to protect them. Look for them to get out, put Morris involved in the run game, and then to move the pocket to buy top RG3 to get the ball down the field. Griffin from the gun, they fake the gig. Griffin's going to run it. That pass to Dirty, and a first down run to get the party started as Griffin goes for Levin. Starters in front of Griffin today. Day. Trent Williams limited in practice this week with the shoulder injury. Two-time Pro Bowler in the last two years. Jackson receivers just saw the run that time by Griffin. Logan Paulson is starter at the tight end. No Jordan Reed going down with a leg injury last set. Here's Mars on the outside across the 32. And tackled by Josh Evans up from the safety position after a gain of three. Defensive starters for Bradley, Chris Clemens. Red Bryant coming over from the Super Bowl defeat. In Seahawks Clemens last week, a fantastic debut, had four tackles and a sack. Paul Puz Leslie headlines the linebacking core. A quite back in 2011, dealing with swelling this week, and no Jonathan Cipri in their second year stud safety. He is down, so Josh Evans, who was a stud last year for 11 games, stepping in in his absence. We'll call it second and nine. Griffin's going to it out, has a man deep in his cut. Right at the ten, and the ball comes loose. And the officials rule that it... Let's see here. And now they say incomplete pass. Delayed signal. Incomplete. Allen Ball was beat. Jaguars dodge a bullet. Well, he throws this one on the money. There is the catch by Deshaun Jackson. Now, does he control it through his fall on the ground? He's down, and then he's hit. I think they're going to review this, and once they review it, they may go ahead and overturn the call down on the field and give a catch. He controlled, you see, with both arms over his throat, and then only after being hit by the defender, being down by contact, then does the ball come out. So the challenge flag come out from Jake Rudin, and looking at that initial replay, this one may be overturned. play is overturned. It'll be a 57-yard gain. They'll look at it. We continue. You're watching the NFL on CBS.
That last 57-yard potential play into review here. Call. After review, the ruling on the field stands at his call. Let's bring in our officiating expert here at CBS, Mike Carey. Mike, uh, take us through that play. Well, I'll tell you, Spiro, this was a great play to be challenged because all the elements of catch were met, and the ball did not come out immediately upon hitting the ground. This is a stands lead, but you'll see as the receiver goes to the ground, he rolls. The ball's still in his possession, then the rake by the defender pulls it through. In my opinion, this should have been reversed. However, this is a stands league, as I said. I have to agree with Mike there because he had control, and then he should have been down by contact even before the defender hit him and jarred ball loose because he had a defender draped around his ankle. For an offense so star for success, it's awfully tough break early in this game. So third and nine, Griffin going down, set. Talk about Jacksonville wreaking havoc, and look who, it's Ryan Davis, second year defensive end who last week had a career high two sacks, dumping Griffin behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you see Davis coming around right here. He spun it with the left defensive end. Working on that side with Red Bryant. He comes around the end there. And you can see he, the right tackle on that play. Tyler Blomis, he's been giving up contact. Davis with the Hugh Cookman product. Mike Brown battling and takes it from his own 15-yard line. Brown bounces to the outside across the 20. And up down at the 24-yard line by Washington. 61-yard punt from Tress A. Jed Henney on the fold when we come back. The NL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Without a heart, it's just a machine. Pizza Hut's bacon and cheese stuffed crust. Bacon, enough said. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Look at the cattle building on an Absolutely picturesque September day. First offensive possession for Chad Henney and Jacksonville. First attempt from just inside the 25. Henney's pass batted down at the line scrimmage. And it will be second and ten. So here is Henney, the seventh year man out of Michigan, Pennsylvania native. You see his numbers last weekend. Had him up Solomon 17 to nothing. And there were some stunt people around the NFL before everything, of course, went south. But early in that game, I got yeah, you. Chad Henney looked like he was in complete command and control through some wonderful throws to a very young group of talented receivers. Denard Robinson, the long setback. They go play action. Henney's going to roll out plenty of time. Going sideline. Hands his man. Aaron Hearns right through his hands. He was wide open and would have had six. D'Angelo Hall scurrying back to recover. And this was the hero, Hearns, early last week. Uh, watch the eyes of D'Angelo Hall. See, they're in the backfield. See, he's not looking at his coverage. He's not looking at the receiver. That's why he gets beat. Now, Hearns has got to make the catch. He had to wait on it impatiently and then lost focus for just that moment. The young, talented receiver got off to a great start last week. This week, not so much. Hearns last week, a touchdown on his first two career receptions, 34 and 21 yards out. He'll never be as open as that. Third and 10, Henny six. Jason Hatcher, Brian Arakpo among the men getting there. Loss of 12, and the Jacksonville Jaguars will punt. Oh, they just cave in on the quarterback, and there's Arakpo right there. Look at him, getting a nice push. He stays on the edge, comes through, and gets the sack with a host of other defenders. That's how you got to do it. Cave in the pocket. Got to put pressure on the opposing quarterback. You want to play well on defense. Brian Angle on the punt. Pink back deep. Andre Roberts from his own 35. Roberts making the first guy miss. Marky throwing from behind the play. 52-yard punt and a return of five yards. And now we wait the penalty. Still looking for our first points, but there have been some fireworks in the early couple of minutes. They're both teams squandering opportunities. 
Of course, the penalty took away the big play caused by RG3 up top. There are two fouls, both by the return team. Illegal block in the back. Return team, number 36. That penalty is declined. Holding, number 82 of the return team during the kick. That penalty is accepted. Ten yards from the end of the kick. It'll be Washington's ball. First down. Timeout. So Darrell Young, Logan Paulson, the two pairs penalized. Griffin got to the field on CBS next. FedEx field still scoreless in a couple of minutes. Redskins back onto the field. They've got it first and ten from inside their own 25. If you just joined us, Redskins had a 57-yard pass play. Brought back, ruled an incomplete pass. It appeared to be complete. Mike Carey, our officiating expert, said that he disagreed with the call on the field. But some early foul works on it. Yeah, I love the sequence of the first three plays of the game. A nice run by RG3 in the read option. They set up the play action pass on the run. Alfred Bowers with the up top shot on Jackson to in my mind what should have been a pass. Ball comes out late. Take it away. Second and eight. Niles Paul, the backup tight end with the injury. Jordan Reed. It's a big moment for him. He's waited for this four or five years. Ball security has been issue with him. Had a fumble Solomon last week. There's Niles Paul off the right side of your screen. Tight end. Why pop? Over the head of Paul Puslusny, but just in front of the safety. It's a good throw by Robert Griffith III. 19 yards through the air, and a Washington first down market at the 45-yard line. You see those numbers last week, the 86 yards, a career high play action. Griffin's going to win. Sneak it inside, Jacksonville territory. Right at that first marker, and he moves the chains with a run of 10 yards. Yeah, he's just going to read the defensive end. He comes down, and Robert's going to pull it and then go around the end. So watch the read option. See the defensive end comes down, that's when he pulls it, keeps it himself. And there's no one to account for the quarterback. That's why the read option play has become a very big play in the National Football League. Helps to stimulate the run game. First and 10 Griffin again from the gun. Here is Roy Hillu Jr., the backup behind Morris, inside the 40 and brought down. All the talks of Griffin you know, staying in the pocket, proving that he could throw from there, but Spradley told us yesterday that he thought that he was going to try to get out and run a little bit more today. He really yeah. thought they would try to move the pocket. Remember, last week, the Redskins could not block J.J. Watt. Well, some of the defenders on this defensive line as a group, they're very good. Second and four again, play action. Griffin fools everyone, gets out of the pocket, throws it, oh. finds his man, it's the John Jackson at the 20, a new Washington first down, 18 yards. As Griffin manufactures the play, Puzlesny coming with the pressure. And now Griffin looks like he's hurt. Uh-oh, he's hit. And this is what happens when you're on the sideline, you get out of pocket. Okay, if you're going to throw it as the defense closing in, you got to be able to take the punishment and take the hit. And he is wincing in pain. And down in pain is Robert Griffith III. Now take a look at this. Comes down on that right leg. Don't want to try to guess at the injury. Mm. But watch him plant the right leg right there. So you see him kind of he came down on his arm the, too. the left leg as well. Yeah. Don't want to speculate at this point. Griffin, about a year and a half removed from that last devastating injury. The second time he tore the ACL, but now the obvious concern on that right skin set line. Clock stopped at 9.23. And it was just a, a marvelous play by Griffin getting out of the pocket and finding Jackson downfield as now Kirk Cousins starts to get loose. Now here's the thing. If you're Jacksonville and Robert did very good getting out of the pocket, making plays, now you get an entirely different quarterback. Kirk Cousins, who has been very good at operating inside pocket, not nearly as much of a threat in the run game as Robert Griffith the third, but Kirk Cousins can function in Jay Gruden's offense from the pocket at a very high level. Again, you see him bowling out as he's pushed out by Reynolds. Sees airborne. And there's right foot. He lands also on that right arm rather awkwardly. Watch put his 
right arm down. He put that right arm down and falls on it. So he doesn't want to try to guess at what this could be. But they continue to evaluate Griffin on the sideline. He was two for two on the drive, each completion for 19 yards. But now Kirk Cousins, we've been here before with him. He made the change at quarterback late last season, really struggled over the last three, four games. And here he is early in this one, first and ten from the Jacksonville 20. Morris with done. Unable to get to the edge. And as we run under nine minutes left in this first quarter. Now, how does things change, Spiro, without Robert Griffin the third? And here's the injury from a couple of years ago. Robert Griffin the third, remember, suffered that torn ACL and LCL injury in the right knee. He had total reconstructive surgery a few days later and turned for the season opener to start the 2013 season. Cousins from the gun is going to throw it in a second. It turns on touchdown! The well young the fullback, 20-yard Washington takes the early lead. He was wide open. We told you this Jaguar secondary. Here he is right here. How he gets wide open when you have a defender out there and they latch on to Pierre Garçon and they allow him to just go wide open into the end zone. Now keep in mind, this is Jacksonville secondary and his plank today without their injured safety. Jonathan Sippert suffered a concussion late in the first half last Sunday against Philippine. Extra point by Kai Thorbath is perfect. So while they continue to examine RG3 on the sideline, Cousins comes in and promptly gets him in the end zone. 7 0 Washington, you're watching the NFL on CBS. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. And by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Robert Griffin III is going to be carted off. It is the left leg that they're looking at. He did have a brace on. It was the right ACL and El Salvador tour. January 2013, that NFC wild card game that Solomon mentioned. And now the waiting game will begin. Kirk Cousins coming in. Solomon ran two plays, run by Morris, and then a 20-yard touchdown pass to the fullback, Darrell Young. Here yeah, on his first throw in the game. We see a Kirk Cousins could operate. Jay Gruden's offense at a very high level. It already gets him into the end zone on his first pass attempt here against the Jacksonville defense. Four backs. UCLA product. Back of the end zone. Field it there by Jordan. Time to pass the 10. That pass the 15. Taking the tacklers at the 20. And that's where Chad Henney and Jacksonville will take over. Adam Hayward on the tackle. Here again, it's the left leg. Solomon and right. There. Yeah, it's going to be right, right there. Injury happened. Yeah, in that knee area, somehow, some way or another, he tweaked that left knee, and he's already straightening it out, understanding. But wait, did he hang in there and still completed the pass on that one? Market just got past the 20. Honey play action completes. Marquise Lee, the rookie out of the USA, he had six catches last week. Good first day yardage, they go for eight. Tackle made by Clark and Dan Emerson. So we saw Dwayne Gratz, Gus Bradley's defense, giving up the touchdown, leaving the fullback. Darrell Young wide open in the corner of the end zone. One thing about Gus Bradley's Jacksonville Jaguars, they've always been very resilient, and they do play hard for their coach. Second and two. They blow up Toby Gerhardt, Brian Arecto. They had some very favorable things to say about Gerhardt said he's old school, doesn't wear gloves, doesn't wear elbow pads. A guy that he's admired from afar the last couple years. Yeah, he remembered Gerhardt from when he was with the Minnesota Vikings. Said he came in and shredded us in one game. Said the guy's hard to tackle and deceptively faster than you would think. Redskins are telling us it is the left ankle that they're looking at for Robert Griffin. His return, they're saying questionable. Third and two. Henny's pass incomplete. Intended for Mike 
Brown, the second year wide out. And Jacksonville will punt. Amerson the coverage. It is right there. There's the throw. It's on that back shoulder, but you got to be able to lasso that one in. Good throw from Chad Henney, but if you're brand, you've got to be able to haul it in. Boy, Allen Nines had that drop. If you're just trying to score the first pass, would have been a long touchdown for Jacksonville as they have not helped Henney so far. Andrews punt. Fielded by a backpedaling Andrew Roberts inside the 20. And it runs out of bounds. Shy of the 30 yard line. 54 yard punt and a 10 yard turn. 7 0 for Cousins and Washington. Well, this Thursday, your football week starts here when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers tangle with the Atlanta Falcons. Big matchups go primetime Thursday night football on NFL Network and CBS. FedEx Field in Washington, 7 0 Redskins. Spiro Diaz, Solomon Wilcox, and our entire CS crew. Just under seven minutes to play in a game that has not been short on drama already. Join us, Robert Griffin the third carted off the field moments ago with what the Redskins are saying, a left ankle injury, his return, pressure. Ah. Get you any new information that they pass along. Cousins faking a couple of handoffs, in and out, deep down the near side, incomplete. And now it looks like Sean Jackson is hurt. Late Marker comes in, about 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. And boy, the Redskins just did not catch a break. Oh, this is John Evans on the play. He played the ball very well, raking down hard on the ball as well as the hand of Deshaun Jackson right there. You rake through the arm to pry the ball loose, but then he lands on as that shoulder, that left shoulder, as you can see holding it, jams right into turf with the weight of Josh Evans on top of Deshaun Jackson. Highly unfortunate for Deshaun Jackson. It's fighting to go for the ball. Very awkward land indeed. Oh, Deshaun Jackson will walk off into the Redskins locker room. His first home appearance here in Washington. Eight catches a week ago, and he comes down on the shoulder of Solomon with the weight of Evans coming down. Yeah, right there. See, and it jammed right into the turf. And, you know, Jay Gruden said he was going to try to get the ball deep to Deshaun Jackson. Boy, he has it. Uh, Mars, first and ten. Across the 30 and brought down to 32. So I'm just wonder from a psychological standpoint, you see Griffin carted off. And now one of your top two wide receivers leaves the game. How the Redskins recover? I think focus is if you're Jay Groot, you're the play caller. You know that everything has to funnel through the run game. Get Alfred Morris to the second level, running the football. Allow for some play action passes. You still have the talented Pierre Garçon who can not only get deep, but he can create yards after catch on short pass. To the outside, across the 35-yard line, the clock continues to run. It'll be a third and short play coming up. Paul Puzzletti, who was the NFL's second leading tackler a year ago, forced him. Take a look at this. This is Red Bryant. Check his 79. He just destroys Tyler Columbus, knocking him in the backfield. That disrupts everything in terms of Alfred Moore's ability to get around the edge on that stretch zone play. Columbus has got to do a better job of containing and blocking on Red Bryant. Well, I have Lou the third game back onto the field on third and four from the 36. Cousins feels the pocket squeeze, sliding for the first down, and he's right there. There's a marker thrown behind the play. He's needed to get to the 40. And now we await. The penalty is DeGruden looks on. There are fouls by both teams on the play. Illegal hit in the face. So the penalty's offset, but they replay the down in third down. Yeah, they called, I think, Number 90, Lichtenstein, the safe, the center. You're going to be able to watch it. Oh, can't see anything right there. I thought Kirk Cousins could have picked up that first down. 
not a slid before the first down mark. So third and fourth play, and the loose still on the field. As Washington goes with three wide. Cousins over the middle, completes. That's Ryan Grant, the rookie wide receiver out of Tulane. He's brought down right around the 40. Need to get right at the 40-yard line, maybe short. Now watch Grant, as he catches it, he comes back and sees right at the first down marker where that right foot was. Right close to the 40-yard line, but then he glides backwards to elude the tackler, and he loses ground and loses the opportunity to pick up a first down. Redskins now making it official. Griffin will not return there, looking for left ankle, we've been told. Deshaun Jackson, left shoulder. His return is us. Fair catch signaled by Mike Brown that takes a Jacksonville bounce into the end zone. And Chad Henney and company will have it from their own 20. Coming up Saturday, the Home Depot SEC on CBS Rocks. When the Florida Gators take on Alabama Princeton Tide. All the begins with college football today. Florida big win yesterday over Kentucky. Took three overtimes last night. And Nick Saban in Alabama. Taking care of Southern Mississippi, 52 to 12. We're at FedEx Field in Washington alongside Simon Wilcox on our entire CBS crew. I'm Spiro Ditas. RG3, if you just joined us, carted off the field, left ankle injury, will not return. No Sean Jackson. And now Jacksonville down 7 0, first and 10 from their own 20. Here's Toby Gerhardt cutting back. Just barely able to get to the line of scrimmage. Gerhardt. Aiden Peterson's back up the last four years in Minnesota. Finally getting his chance on to be a frontline back. Uh, he's a big kid. He's a talented running back. He said when he was eight years old, his dad showed him tapes of Earl Campbell. You know, he, he's a big guy, like, like an Earl Campbell. Now that like a lot of guys miss, he's got to be able to come down here and break tackles. Yeah, hard on second nine, wrapped up. Picks up a couple, Chris Baker. Who has stepped into that starting no position for the injured Barry Cofield. And of a couple, and it'll be third and seven coming up. And you said it, you, know, you go to the, the stat books at the end of the season, and top rushing backs aren't usually the bigger backs. Gerhardt feels like he can be that guy. Certainly the Bradley feels the same. Yeah, those guys are far and between. Remember the great John Higgins here with the Grand Skin. He was one of those guys. You know, Bettis comes to mind. You mentioned Daryl Campbell. And it's not a lot of those big guys that could make you miss. Third and seven. Henny nearly picks right in the breadbasket of David Anderson. And Jacksonville will punt. Well, it was actually Anderson who nearly had the interception, as you said, Spiro, but he and number 30, E.J. Bigger, they collide at the same time. Both guys had a shot at intercepting that one. Pass was intended for Marquise Lee. Look, both guys, they fight one another for the ball. And Ambrose would have had it cleanly had he not been interfered by his own teammate. So three Jacksonville possessions have all ended in punts. Andrews has been busy so far. Roberts is the player. He's got his own 25 and run out of bounds right around the 35-yard line. And what has been a injury-plagued open quarter left leg of Grimm. There it was. They are calling it an ankle carded not return. And Deshaun Jackson, left shoulder. His return questionable. And now we know why the Washington Redskins during this past offseason, Spiro, so reluctant when teams came calling to trade for Kirk Cousins. Uh, here's a guy that's been successful here as you take a look at the injury so far all in the first quarter, losing dynamic players like RG3 and Deshaun Jackson, but great depth at both positions. First and ten, play action to Mars. Cousin rolling out, finds his man, that's Roberts. Acquired in the offseason to give him some juice in the return game. 11-yard pass play for a first down. You know, at the beginning of the game, you mentioned RG3 struggle during the preseason. Well, Kirk Cousins did it. He made plays just like this. Roberts is a guy that came in the offseason via free agency. He's going to have an opportunity to play in the absence of Deshaun Jackson. So we said depth at the quarterback position and at the wide receiver position here for the Washington Redskins. We've seen Gruden go almost exclusively from the shotgun in this first quarter. Draw play here. Morris! Cash is checked! 
Jacksonville's defense in Jaguars territory to the 38-yard line. 18-yard burst before Evans brought him down. You know, it's that stretch zone play, but you love the vision. That they, look, they get it going this way, and then here's, and he hits it right up the middle. Watch the vision of Alfred Morris. See, he sees it. He sees daylight right there. He understands he can go all the way to the back side where his left tackle was blocking for him. Trent Williams just collapsing that entire side. Only Adrian Peterson has rushed for more yards the last two years than Alfred Morris. This is the Cousins play action. That's complete. Inside the 30. That's the backup tight end. Niles Paul, his second catch that time for eight. We'll set up second and short. Right. Kirk Cousins has got good vision down the field. But he's got a couple of guys open, and you see out, see there as they go one way, then out ball. But look at the second level. Look at number 12, Andre Roberts. He's open also. Pick your man. This Jacksonville Jaguar secondary has got a lot of holes in it. Kirk Cousins is going to find it. Cousins pitched a perfect game so far. You saw four for four. There's Morris, such a physical runner. Taking on a tackler, wins the guy Jr., the starting safety. Out of Kentucky, stepping up to make the tackle down before Morris picks up the short first down. I'm going to talk this week that they haven't leaned enough solid on Alfred Morris, a guy who is as talented a running back as we have in the NFL. You see today, we'll surpass, it just has a surpass Clinton Portis for the fastest Redskins runner to get to 3,000 career yards. Cousins, wide open is his man. Niles Paul into the end zone. Touchdown. Wow, he was wide open. This is the same play that we saw Niles Paul. And this could be a touchdown. Did they even touch him when he was on the ground? That remains to be seen. Watch it, because one way he comes out. Now let's see if they touch him after he makes the catch. They're gonna before mark it he down. gets up. See, he's up. But one of the back okay. side officials said touchdown. And now they have it marked down at the one. Josh Evans. Did he make contact before he's up before now? the ball breaks the plane? The knee is down and it's touch right there. And you're right. You gotta see if the ball breaks the plane there. So they mark it at the one. That takes us to the end of the first quarter. Seven and nothing. You're watching it. On CBS. Call on the field after a review. Miles Paul ruled down inside the one yard line. First and goal, Redskins. And a play that was awfully close. Kirk Cousins down in relief of the injured RG3. Five for five already with a 20 yard touchdown pass. Morris close to the goal line, no signal. As that Jacksonville front so improved, able to hold. Let's bring in our officiating expert, Mike Carey. Mike, take us to that last play. Spiro, this is one of those things that is an example. Excellent officiating. The official's right on the goal line. This all happens in a blink of an eye. But there's a touch right on his rear. And at that instant, the ball is just shy of the goal line. What a spectacular play. An even better call on the field. Yeah, that was a moment of interest. Too. The game was decided, but obviously the officials were able to pick it up. Second and go. Morris, this time, is going to waltz his way in. Washington with a two-touchdown lead. Well, we said they had to get Alfred Morris going. He was huge on that drive. His ability to get to the second level. Kirk Cousins beat it off with throwing the ball down the field. But look at the fullback. He changes the line of scrimmage. See, he seals it there with a nice kick out. Morris gets an easy lane into the end zone. Right now, the Redskins are winning the war in the trenches, and Alfred Morris is taking advantage of it. Morris had 91 yards in the lesson Houston last Sunday. Average better than six yards per carry. And boy, you know, considering injury, Solomon Griffin going down to Sean Jackson. This Washington offenses look good. Yeah, there's the kick out, and then watch it right here. Right, if you can get the fullback to just kick out on the edge, and they seal the edge. See, we got a nice seal on the inside. And we talk about a nice alley into the end zone for Alfred Morris hitting a home run for Redskins. Jaguars defensive end 
Chris Clemens called him a, a smaller version of Marshawn Lynch, but this guy, former sixth round pick a couple of years ago. What a two and a half year run it's been for him to start a brilliant NFL career. He's gone eight consecutive games without rushing 400 yards. Right now, Jay Gruden's going to ride. Alfred Morris does open everything up in the passing game. Jay Gruden's got to feel really good. You know, he's been hit three starters now on the offense. He's without RG3. He's without his starting tight end, Jordan Reed. And he's without Deshaun Jackson. Now, Paul's done a really good job filling in for Jordan Reed at the tight end position. Andre Roberts is filled in for Deshaun Jackson. And boy, is Kirk Cousins stepped in. They're playing with three backups in the lineup on offense. Left-footed kick on Tresway, fielded by Tottenham deep out of his end zone across the 25 to the 30. Brought down at around the 32-yard line. It's a good field position for Chad Henney. But the Jaguars need offense and right now down 14 to Follow all of today's football action around the country. Download the CBS Sports app right now for lightning fast scores, breaking news, video, and more, all on your phone. Now, what do you do if you're Jacksonville Spiro? Yeah, you got to take some shots. Remember, they were able to put the double move on DeAndre Hall to get Hearns wide open to the field, and he dropped. You've got to continue to challenge them outfield, provide a spot for this offense, and get back into the game. Heading from the gun, first and ten, hit as he throws, it is incomplete, kind of swinged out of his hands. Pressure coming up the gun from Perry Riley Jr. Updated uh, injury word on Deshaun Jackson, left shoulder, Solomon will not return. Yeah, a very unfortunate, but he told you they've got good depth at quarterback, as we've seen with the play from Kirk Cousins. Good depth at wide receiver, you know, we talk about the depth at tight end without Jordan Reed. Now Paul has caught three passes for 51 yards. Jacksonville is down. You see the total yardage number. Zero at this point for Jacksonville. Yet to get a first down. This is their fourth possession heading. Complete. Finally, it's caught by the rookie, Allen Robinson, who was expected to start to get a little more playing time. He's had a couple of hamstring injuries, Solomon. The man that they took with the 60th overall pick in May. Right now, this offense, they've got to find some rhythm. They have not been able to run, but when opportunities to catch it you got to be able to haul it in they already are 0 for 3 on third down today last week Jacksonville was 2 of 14 converting only 14 percent of their third down plays and Henny the veteran quarterback got to be able to convert in these situations you Jack finish Jacksonville's offensive coordinator head on third and three going backwards way in the hatcher we can have it Hatcher got to quarterback earlier had a last week as he played from this hometown crowd for the first time. Uh, they're just overwhelming this Jacksonville offensive line. They're young. Look at Hatcher right up the gut. You get pressure into the face of the quarterback. Goes a long way in disrupting any play they want to run. And Hatcher come over via free agency from Dallas and already making his presence felt on this Redskins defensive line. Hatcher in his next season. Eight years in Dallas. Last season a career high of 11 seconds leading to his first Pro Bowl selection. Roberts, shoot the pass, one man, couple of penalty markers coming by the play. As Roberts is across the 20, and brought down the 23-yard line, a 52-yard punt by Anger, and 11 yards on the turn. as they mark it back 14 to nothing Washington and Jacksonville's offense continuing to give Gus Bradley nothing so far one total yard who just joined us a couple of minutes gone by in the second quarter and Jacksonville down 14 to nothing after the penny on the return they mark it inside the 10 first down run by Moss minimum pickup Tackle made by the backup defensive tackle, Aubrey Jones. Avery Jones, excuse me, the second you man out of Georgia. This 
Washington Redskins football team in desperate need to win. They've lost nine consecutive games. Just their longest losing streak in over 50 years. And now here comes Kirk Cousins. Going to have an opportunity to put an end to it. Sue Morris's numbers on the top of you see 33 rush yards already. Second eight play is cut. That's Paul. He's been a busy man so far. Solomon mentioned the injury to Jordan Reed went down with a leg injury last week in Houston. Paul that time five. It'll be third down. I think it's a testament to just how good of talent they have on this Washington Redskins roster. Jay Gruden inherits some talent. It's his job as the offensive coordinator, play caller, and head coach to get the team moving in the right direction. Four catches for Paul. That matches the number last week in a career high. 56 yards. This is third and two. Does this? Pat Fink over the middle. Right up in it. Roberts. First down and a lot more. Joe Shea in the 50. Will Blackman makes the stop. 32 yards through the air from Cousins. Herb Cousins is doing a really good job. Look, starting over here on the left side there's Roberts right over the middle behind the linebackers and then the Ivy the vision of Kirk Cousins pulls look pulls him right out of out of coverage and he comes back to this side and that's where he finds the window but he started clear to the right side right oh, yeah. back to the left for the wide for the Roberts first and ten in the loop it's Roberts in inside the three and finally brought down from the best Chris Clemens from his defensive inside Drags him down, but not before Roberts run for 19. <laughs> Jay Gruden pulling out all tricks in this one as a play caller. Now look, here's Roberts coming around the end there. They get it from one way, and right now they have this defense for Jacksonville off balance. They're in chase mode as Chris Clements come down with the tackle. But look, they outflank the defense. He finds the seam, and he hits it going down Why, here. Hey, hey. What's up? Ten plays against. Right around the tackle as Morris runs for 24 yards, and now we await the penalty. This Alfred Morris boy, whew, he's special. This was an issue for Jacksonville's defense last Sunday, and Philly gave up a lot of plays in the second half. The run. Number 15, wide receiver is that Aldrich Robinson right here. Look, it's going to be well downfield as Alfred Morris starting to cut back. See, he's already grabbing. He's already reaching. Just look him. Don't put the hands on the outside. Defender, they're going to call you for holding every single time. Was it necessary for Robinson to hold on that play? It was already a big run by no! Alfred Morris. First down still stands. The market at the 21-yard line. Look at the total yardage. before Alfred Morris showed up. Oh, what a play here. Yeah, Roy Hallou, uh, and I thought we would see both of them today. He's capable of making plays. When you can break tackles in the National Football League and make Fenders miss, well, you're going to be a really good running back, and Hallou is capable of putting up numbers as well. It was Puzlesny and Clemens also branched there. They had Hallou wrapped up, but he wouldn't go down. Here's a second and one pay. Needed to get to the 11. Looks like he's short. Now, Lou, the former fourth-round pick in 2011. Buried at times in this offense under Mike Shanahan. But, boy, he has been already early in the year, so a huge weapon on third down. Yeah, and they're already over 100 yards rushing are the Washington Redskins. Start with Alfred Morris. Just pushing Gus Bradley's defense. They got, they got up to a much better start defensively one week ago against the Eagles. But not so well here today. Third and one. Play action. Cousins has his man and he's caught by Paul. Right at five, but a penalty marker comes in behind the tackle. Thrown from the end zone. And the 
officials are signaling first down that it is again the defense. Seven yard hookup. Before the pass was thrown, illegal contact. That's Allen Ball. Boy, how good is Kirk Cousins and Solomon? Eight for eight, over 100 yards. Here's the penalty right here. You're beyond five yards. You, you can't grab them. I mean, there's a point of emphasis there. You can't do that. And Niles Ball has just been open all day long. They haven't covered him yet, Spiro. Ninth pin to drive over four minutes. First and goal just inside the five. Morris. Watch 92, Ziggy Hood. Got a chance to make tap. Doesn't. Mm. So you, you make the big guys miss right in the hole at the point blank range. Boy, you're putting in work right now. This Jackson Jaguars defense, they're getting out of their gaps. They're not in position to make plays, and they're not making tackles. And the goal line, Mark comes in. That time, Dakota Watson. <laughs> wow. Looked like he may have got better of Mars. <laughs> touchdown, Washington. It's at Roy Miller. Morris with his second touchdown run of this open half. Alfred Morris. And they talk about it. He's a good runner because he knows how to fit. Now, watch the hit by Dakota Watson. Still not enough. Mm. Keep Alfred Morris from sliding off the edge of the defender. Get it in the end zone. Look, he's winning in pain. He knows he paid dearly to get that touchdown. Fourth on for the extra point. We take a quick look to confirm all scoring play is subject to review. It is a touchdown. Four bats. Splits the uprights. Washington covers 92 yards in 10 plays. They are calling Jacksonville by three touchdowns. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bose. Official sound of the NFL. McDonald's. Official sponsor of the NFL. I'm loving it. And by New Red Wicked Apple. Refreshingly hard. Jefferson Memorial on a beautiful September day in our nation's capital. 21-0 Washington. After absorbing the early injuries to Robert Griffin, third party off the field with a left ankle injury, will not return. Alfred Marsh, second touch on rush. Did pay the price. And after that hit a moment ago by Dakota Watson. Fielded by Toppin. Yards deep in his own end zone across the 10. Barely able to get back to the 15-yard line. Can Jacksonville get any offense going on CBS? Oh, it's not too late to sign up. Play NFL.com. Fantasy football. Get free mobile apps. Exclusive Ethan highlights. Sign in under two minutes. And pay for free at NFL.com slash fantasy. Jacksonville has it inside their own 15-yard line. If you've just joined us, barely any yards of total offense. You see the plays that they've run, four possessions, four points, zero first downs, and they're down three touchdowns. This is Jamal Robinson, the converted dual threat quarterback at Michigan. Keenan Robinson on the stop. As a penalty marker, he's thrown right at the line of scrimmage. Time NFL vet in his 11th season to take another look. Solomon and that last Mars touchdown run before they do pay the price. Just follow Lakota Watson, see it through the eyes of the defense. He'll take 
take it to the running back. He plays it well, but not good enough to keep out for the horse out of the end. Well, that penalty, 15 yards by far. Jacksonville's best offensive player today. That pass intended for Marquise Lee. Excellent coverage by the rookie, the cornerback out of Clemson, Bashar Lee. Look, really almost intercepted. If you can't complete the short ones, I'm going to tell you right now, you got to start taking some shots down. If you got to loosen up the secondary, becoming even more difficult for Chad Henney to manufacture any completions, even a short throw. of the game and they finally pick up the first down and he making something happen with his legs it was a really good decision and a lot of courage to finish off that run beyond the first down mark scrimmage if it stands it'll be the third sack for the Redskins oh, it's right tackle Cameron Brettfield he was the guy that was supposed to block Ryan Harrington so if you're not gonna line up on the line of scrimmage and be in the backfield one it's an illegal formation two it ought to get an advantage in fact protection, but it still didn't work the young Bradfield. This is Jackson offense that really struggled last day after that 17 to nothing lead that they got to do. Last scene went dead last in the NFL and points here. Unable to find the edge. Four step downs inside the 40 on a second and long play. Rackpo and Riley Jr., the linebackers, forced out. Well, Jim has looked playing really good up front they're dominating they're swarming Brian Arakpo setting the edge on the outside anything thrown out there rallying to make tackles he's collapsing a pass uh, his ability to rush the quarterback so right now they're doing a really good job of crowding the pocket around the quarterback third and 15 Henny far side it is caught they do say it is a catch, but well short of the first down marker. It's caught by Robinson, the rookie. Second reception for him. Emerson there on the tight coverage. Oh, it's a good throw there, but there you see right there, it looked like that knee was out of bounds. They may take it back, but I'm not so sure the Redskins are going to protest. So Chad Henney in his second year in this new offense under Jet Fish. Former offensive coordinator at the collegiate level of Miami. The take away that first half last Sunday. They have been awful. Anger, booming punt. Fielded by Robinson. It is on 14-yard line. Roberts accelerates to the outside. Excellent coverage on the punt. Troy Reynolds among the tacklers after 40 punt cousins and company up 21 and nothing. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the all-new Chrysler 200, America's import. And by FedEx One Rate, simple at rate shipping with the reliability of FedEx. Well, here at FedEx Field, Redskins fans rejoicing in a 21-0 lead, but still a bit apprehensive. RG3 carted off, left hand will not return. Sean Jackson, a left shoulder injury, and he's dead. What is he? But on the field, the Redskins have been dominant. There's Kirk Cousins, pump fakes, going sideline, and one of the few times it has not worked, penalty marker comes in. Andre Roberts, intended receiver, coverage by the second-year corner, Dwayne Grotz, out of Connecticut. Better interference by the defense, number 27. Spot out, automatic, first foul. Gratz matched up right there. Look, okay, that was okay, but now right there, the guy reached out and grabbed, slowed him up a little bit. That's not incidental contact. That's 
deliberate contact beyond five yards. They're going to be flagged on that play. The Whitney penalty. Cousins perfect. Eight of eight through the air. Here's Morris. On first and ten minimal game. Let's get to our wisdom of Solomon here in week two. Take a look at some quarterbacks who succeed as rookies without a red shirt year. Of course, Peyton Manning need a red shirt to become a five-time NFL MVP. And Cam Newton avoided a red shirt. He was the first rookie to throw for 4,000 yards in a single season. Andrew Luck played immediately. Seven fourth quarter come from behind. We had set a rookie record. And look, Blake Bortles is a guy that the Jaguars plan to redshirt. Hetton still only 16 total yards of offense with veteran Chad Henney. You have to wonder how long they'll be able to stick with that program. Second and seven. Cousins taking right. Coming this side. Magic Robinson. Across the 35. Brought down at around the 37-yard line. And here, guys, Sal, to your point, sitting out that first year, it have turned out pretty well. Tom Brady had it out his whole rookie year went on. That turned out pretty good. Carson Palmer was the first overall pick in 2001 and yet still played every single uh, game after. Of course, he missed his entire first year and then you could see the 4,000 yards to three different teams. Drew Brees as well as Aaron Rodgers also had to raise their first year. Carson Palmer had a scratch today, by the way, in the Cardinals game against the Jets. Third and two. Needed to get just out past the 39-yard line. Looks like they're short. And finally, something positive for Jacksonville. And as we are now under four minutes to play, first half of the 21-0 game. Washington Redskins continue to dominate. It starts with the run game. And it also has, you know, help that Kirk Cousins come in and played well for Jay Groot. We talk about him looking better in the offense during the preseason than Robert did. And you can see the scoreboard reflects the fact that he has a real good feel for this audience. He's operating at a very high level. You see Cousins' numbers, 9 for 9 for 116 yards. This is a first-string Washington offense that was just flat-out awful, Solomon, in the preseason. Griffin really struggled. So you wonder you know, how those conversations were. Obviously, the, the bigger question is the ankle of Griffin, just from a health standpoint. But this is something we... Aren't new to Cousins coming in in relief. Remember the uh, game with 14 a couple yeah. of years ago coming on in relief. The initial knee injury of Griffin led them to a comfort behind win against the Ribbons. Postseason success. Kirk Cousins is certainly capable of, of playing at a high level. It remains to be seen. Can he become a leader of this football team? Don't know how long. Robert's going to be out, but he's going to have an opportunity, and during that time, there's going to be a lot of conversation about who's going to be the quarterback moving forward into the future, particularly if he keeps playing like what we've seen here in the first half. Call it, let's go. Call also, it, to be fair, you know, when Cousins came on late last season, those last couple of games, he did not look good. About this, no one for the rest of the game looked good. <laughs> the oh, final oh. Ball. Good point. teams have been anything but special here for the Redskins as of late. The key Davis must have heard us talking about it because he wanted to put an end to this. It looks like it. looking for it here. Wow. I don't know. That's face mask to face mask nearly. See, he doesn't duck the crown of his head. See, that's face mask to face mask there. This is why these kind of plays, they're bang bang, I think need to be reviewable, Spiro. I don't think he ducked. I don't think he led with the crown. Face mask. He kept his head up. It's what we want. We do want players to take their helmet out of the play, but sometimes when you're coming in that close, that fast, really difficult to turn ahead. Well, Jacksonville needed something. Let's see if they can take advantage. Gerhardt, minimal run on first down. Let's bring in our officiating expert yet again. Mike Carey. Mike, what did you see on that last play? Again, we have a good call. Remember, defense receivers, the punter, the receiver punt is characterized as that too. 
that target has to be lowered. So contact, face mask to face mask, was forcible to the head. That's a good call for unnecessary runs on the pencil receiver. Mike, thanks. You know, we've seen Solomon, those plays called with a lot less contact so far in the preseason now early in the year. As they cleat to Mercedes Lewis, here is the rule to hit on defenseless players. Yeah, you want to turn the head away from your target, get the lead with the shoulder to the body or torso below the neck area of the opponent. And officials are instructed to rule on the at, not the aftermath or the result. So, you know, Mike Carey's right. <laughs> of course, I have to defer, but you got to take the helmet out of it and get that target down and sit to the body or torso area. Hey, no chance. They are just flooding the gate. Here's Perry Riley right there. He comes late. He's a secondary blitzer. In other words, he's not on the line of scrimmage. Was he put it in the protection? Come free and is able to get that hit he's on the ground. Jacksonville desperate for points, desperate for anything really at this point. Two minute warning. Second and 18. Second and 30. Honey sees it. Robinson got down right after the catch. It goes from seven. David Emerson getting there first. Coming up, the Verizon halftime report. We'll send you to New York. JB, Tony, Bart, Glory, Coach Cower with all the latest week two stories and highlights. We'll also get you a special preview of Thursday Night Football on CS and NFL work. It's all coming up on the Verizon halftime report. Looks like Gus Bradley, Jed Fish, the second year offensive coordinator, will take a timeout as they try to dial something up here. Solomon, it was a Jacksonville team that was up in the first half last Sunday in Philly, 17 to nothing. As a defense, as a defense coordinator, this is what you want. Third and long, you look at third and 11. Got to believe Jim Haslett, the coordinator for the Redskins, to dial up the blitz. Got to come after Chad Henney on this play. Well, we wondered if the pass protection for Washington so far it has been an issue for Jacksonville. You saw the 4-6. But they have allowed in his first half. Third and 11. Here's it. It's caught. Plenty of real estate. Mercedes Lewis to the five. Lunch end zone. Touchdown. And then we'll silence the stadium at least for the moment. 62 yards. Henny to Lewis. And Jacksonville showing some life. Bakari Rambo, number 24, comes up from his safety position. And watch, he's just going to come up here, but watch, Ramble comes over, misplays the ball, right here, undercuts it, doesn't make the tackle, doesn't defend the play, allow Mercedes Lewis to get down the field, and he's able to stay in bounds, pick up the touchdown play, Ramble's got to do a better job of taking a better angle, okay, so he makes the catch, he got to at least make the tackle and get Lewis out of bounds earlier. Rambo making a second straight start for the suspended Brandon Merriweather. He got beat badly in Houston last Sunday in a 76-yard touchdown catch by DeAndre Hopkins of the Texans. Bad air on that play. That's Jacksonville on the board. Here's Scurby. So Jacksonville, a late first half. Touchdown to Mercedes Lewis, the former pro bowler. You know, it all starts with vision of Chad Henney. He sees Rambles leaping over the top, and that's why he can take advantage of his throw. If you get stuck on the hash, you don't come over soon enough. Look, he beats Bakari Rambo over the top for angle by Rambo. He can't even get back to make the tackle. <laughs> and the tall and talented tight end, Mercedes Lewis takes it into the house. Good throw from Henny. Good read from Henny. Well, this game has not been short on fireworks. Consider early injuries if you've just joined us. RG3. What looks to be a, a substantial injury to his left ankle. Carted off the field to Sean Jackson. Kirk Cousins come on perfect so far and relieve Solomon Griffin. Built a 21-0 lead. And now Jacksonville finally showing a heartbeat. Getting on board here with a buck 40 left in the first half. You know, anytime you can squander a lead, Spiro, it's usually because you have errors like that on the back end on the defense in coverage. Busted coverage, 
giving up the cheap touchdown. That's a way to scunder a big lead. Roberts watches it through the back of the end zone, so the market at the 20. Here comes Kirk Cousins. As the Washington team plays its 2014 home opener, we talked about the long nine-game losing streak after the defeat in Houston last Sunday. Lost the final eight games last year. It's their long losing streak since the 1960-61 season when they lost 17 straight. His Cousins from the gun again. First to step from the top. Redskins have one timeout. Left Cousins airs it out. It's complete. That's the rookie, Ryan Grant. Grant going to get some more time with the injured Sean Jackson done for the day. Nine yards, second and short coming up. Another reminder to keep it here. The Verizon Halftime Report comes your way next. J.B., Tony, Bart, Homer, and Coach Cower standing by in New York. We'll take you around the NFL here on week two, plus a special preview of Thursday Night Football on CBS and NFL Network. The Verizon Halftime Report coming up in minutes. With FedEx, Peter Washington, Spiro Vita, Solomon Wilcox on tie to be a crew. DFL will take a shot here, second and short. It's caught by Roberts. Not just one catch last week. Roberts was four years of his career in Arizona. First down for Washington. Oh, Kirk does it. Looks magnificent. 11 for 11. Moving the offense on just about every single possession he came into the game he scored on his first three possessions of the game all three touchdown zero I, I can't be even more impressed with what i'm seeing from kirk cousins again if you've just joined us robert griffin the third carted off the field earlier the left ankle injury done for the day he's going to wait all the mls and x rays here's miles paul fifth reception that is a new career mark for the fourth year tight end out of Nebraska, six yards before he's run out of bounds. Man, watch the wickets farm there. It's supposed to be hands to the face mask. The offensive player does it. We know if the defensive guy does it, we're getting the flag. Yeah. He didn't grab it and pull, but you can't go hands to the face on either side of the ball. Ah! Spoken like a former defensive back. Yeah. I'm with you. As Washington get away with one there, second and four, Cousins pass the flick at the line of scrimmage, and finally, his first completion. So pushing after the final whistle. Players have to be separated to around the line of scrimmage. Redskins have one timeout left. Clock stops the incompletion, 118, it'll be third and four. There's four back, you see the target line. Career long is 50. Late last season, you gotta hurry, Kirk, gotta hurry. December you gotta against hurry. the Chiefs. You gotta hurry, You're running out of time. I know, I know. Well, on set. Back here's Cousins. Kalu beats one man to the 45 yard line. That's what he needed to get. Wow, spot. What a play by Kalu. Able to move the chain again. Here's another one. We talk about. Niall Hall, fourth-year guy out of Nebraska. Roy Hallou, four years out of Nebraska, playing like a corn husker, making a myth, knowing where the first down marker is. Can't say enough about football players who understand the situation in the moment. Makes a myth, hits the first down marker, get out of bounds to stop trying. Jay Gruden still has that timeout in his back pocket. Cousins has it out in the middle of the field. Wide open is his man, Paul. And what a first half. For the backup tight end, 27 yards for the first down. They got the ball with 1.40 to go. They just ink and dunk, stepping out of bounds, stopping the clock. And watch Kirk Cousins. He's working the clock. Great time management by Cousins. Move and pre snap as Clemens came across the line of scrimmage. Looked like Trent Williams made a move for Washington as we await the call. Well done by the offense. A 71. 55 yard penalty. Still first down. Washington was elected to take its last time out of the half to prevent the 10 second runoff. There's no final time. 
Hot charge timeout. Settling right in, finding the seams in the defense. He'll able to make the play. Talked about what a big moment in his career. This is for Niles Paul, the fourth year tight end. Injury to Jordan Reed last week, went down with leg injury. Paul with a career high seven catches, 96 yards in the first half. What did Jay Gruden tell us when we talked with him on Friday? He said he just believes that the end of the the quarterback position is what? To be played from the pocket. You want to have a long-term career. Right now, all these throws I'm watching from Kirk Cousins, they're not of the read option, play action variety. He's reading the defense, sitting in the pocket, and he is dealing a blow to this Jacksonville Jaguars defense. Ah! So what Gruden did in Cincinnati, mentoring a young Andy Dalton through three really historic seasons for a young quarterback. Cousins just put the park this Jackson for the secondary. Late penalty marker comes in. Allen Ball on the coverage. Hey, he's hanging in the pocket, too. Little hands to the face. On the defense. Number 90. first down. Andre Branch. He got him. Legal hands to the face. See, we told you defenders. See, the defenders are right here. See, you can't get that hand to the face. We know defensive players can't do it. Offensive players can't do it. Keep the hands below that neck area. Those are the types of penalties at this state of the game. After you've just finally scored, the difference between a four-win team like Jacksonville last year and a team on the rise. Come and side. Incomplete. It is the first time that they have targeted Pierre Garçon in quite some time. Guy and ball on the coverage. Worry about the bounds just a little bit. See, when you stem this route, you should leave him three yards between yourself and the sideline, and he did. And that ball has to be thrown a little bit more over the top. I thought I saw stem this route perfectly. Ball was not as well thrown, but got to give credit to ball on the coverage. Really good coverage on the play. Garcon's third season in Washington has a 17-game streak with at least five-plus receptions. A Redskins record on the line today, second attempt. Tries to pull the throw near side, that's it for me. Intended threat. So Washington out of timeouts, 29 seconds left, third and 10. You know, Solomon, where does Gruden go here? Well, it's the one time that you saw the quarterback and receiver uh, out of place. Now, the one guy who's been repeatedly open <laughs> for Gruden all day has been now with Paul. I think you go with something to get linebackers to settle in, but He's been sneaking by him, getting open all day, coming off the edge, even if it's in the reverse boot action. Only seven receptions in the first half for Niles Paul. You see third down conversion rate, something they really struggled with in Houston last week. But it's coming, and they get to Cousins. And that a play that you just can't take if you're the quarterback, but really Cousins never had a chance. Blackman and Clay come hard on the blitz, loss of 10. Uh, run you got to get it, and you got to make a play. Well, you, basically, that, that sack just took him right out of field goal range. They can't do anything. They're going to run out of time. And it looked like Jacksonville, Solomon took a timeout. Remember last week on long run by Darren Sproles, they were mislined Gus Bradley's group? He said he should have called it a timeout. And that time, called the timeout, may have helped the Washington Redskins. Reset game clock for three seconds, please. Three seconds. Thank you. Sally, you saw the look on Gus Bradley's face. You wonder where that timeout call came from. Yeah, uh, it didn't need to. They were going to run out of time. You'd be going in at half right now. Jacksonville will put wow. four defensive backs about 25 yards behind line of scrimmage here and that could turn out to be a terrible mistake if Washington somehow here can get it in the end zone this will be the final play they're out of timeouts three cents on a fourth and 20 from the 38 bizarre ending to the half Cousins going in zone Car seven batted down and that takes us to the end of the first half Josh Evans batted it to the FedEx field turf. 21 
to seven. Your score at halftime. We'll be back with the Verizon halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Time winds down here at Fex Field and a Washington Redskins team dealing with some significant injuries early in this game. Despite that, it jumped out to a 21-0 lead and 21-7 as we rejoin you here at the NFL on CBS Bureau. Adidas and Solomon Wilcox who took Jacksonville four possessions to get a first down. They finally broke in. Had to continue to come back and win this game. Yeah, down by 14. The offensive line's got to dig in. they got to begin to protect their quarterback, Chad Henney. But they have to manufacture rush yards so they can create play action pass opportunities. It starts with the offensive line. If you can run the ball then and protect the quarterback, then they'll be able to score points. All right, we take a look now at our direct TV ultimate picture cam. RG3 going down with a left leg injury. This was Cousins' first pass, a 20-yard touchdown completion to the backup fullback, starting fullback, I should say, Drell Young, and that got things going for the Redskins. Take a look at our first half stats mentioned no first downs on Jacksonville's first, uh, first four possessions Jenny started two of eight complete his last five passes to Solomon of that first half yeah I, he was just incredible in those first three possessions that led to the 21 points you see for the Washington Redskins and I gotta tell you right now if you're talking about Kirk Cousins there's a guy that has been on fire converting 11 of 11 on his first pass attempts of the game so he's got this red get off it's off to a good start he's got to play strong in the second half to finish home opener for washington beat last sunday q 17 to 6. here comes jordan todman across the 15 brought down at around the 17 yard line jackson along that 17 to nothing second half lead last sunday in philadelphia just four and all last season but did split their last eight games a year ago finished four and four a team that, despite blowing up that big lead, Sam feels as though they're on the rise. Now can't come back. Really kind of turns the tables. Last week, a big collapse late. Now trying to come back from 21 down. And comes a time where just competing and being close in games can be enough. You got to go out and win. Go on the road and start taking games away from teams you expect to beat you. Well, here's one you don't see often: offside on a kick. So it looks like they will send the kicking unit back onto the field. Not sure what happened on that play. Jay Gooden, his counterpart, Gus Bradley, second-year coach of the Jaguars. 48 years of age, succeeded Mike Malarkey prior to last season. And a look at the first half possessions, Henny and Jacksonville. And then they finally convert. Look at that. Your first five possessions, they really have struggled to even pick up a first down where they had gone three and out on those first four possessions of the ball game. Keep in mind, this is a Jacksonville team that once again is without their number one wide receiver, Cecil Schwartz, still dealing with a hamstring strain. Alan Hearns, who had the historic NFL debut last Sunday, and by the way, dropped to what would have been about a 60-yard touchdown on their first pass, making a second straight start. You know, for young football teams, when you have opportunities like that still, you have to convert. You know, the psyche of young football teams is so fragile that if you have that spark early, it tends to turn into a fire that really ignites the football team to play well early on. Travis Way gets a mulligan. This is Tottenham fielding on a bounce across the 20. So better field position for Chad Hitty and Jackson. 21 7. As we get going here, second half. FedEx Field in Washington. You see Henny start and complete on six of his first eight throws. Had a chance to visit with Henny yesterday, seventh year man out of Michigan. He knows the deal. He's kind of a placeholder. Until third overall pick in the draft, Blake Bortles is ready. Whenever that day may come. Toby Earhart has been quiet. Earhart, as you see, Bortles there. Sideline. You know, sometimes you 
coordinator, Jed Fisher, the offense coordinator for Jetville. You've got to come up with more creative ways to run the football. In the National Football League, when you line up in an eye for them, you're telling the defense, we're loaded up to run the ball. And there's got to be more creative ways to do it. Now you go play action out of I-47, but usually first and ten, I formation that tells the defense that you have an intent to try to run the football. Looks like Mercedes Lewis is hurt. He will be helped off the field. Lewis had the 63-yard touchdown reception late in the first half to get Jacksonville on the board. And Bobby is concerned on that side. Lewis, the former pro bowler in 2010. Try to get an update quickly as we can. Gerhardt lines up high formation, set second and long. Penny. Gonna run it. Slides just past the original line of scrimmage. Got a favorable spot, Pepper three. Now, see, this is high formation, and it's sort of a half hearted attempt at play action. Towards the running back when he went five for two. If you know the way action, you got to turn toward the running back. Go ahead and run it. But that was the way. So there's the real sense of a play action of the threat of a run fake there to hold the secondary linebackers. Third and nine. Henny going down again. Sack number five for the Washington defense, and it's Hatcher again. Well, Hatch is smart enough to know. They try to run it early, then they go play action. On third and long, they got to throw it now. He's hitting his ears back at the top of your screen, knocking down hands of the intended blocker. And he's still able to get into the backfield with away with the sack. Someone mentioned the profile free agent deal that Hatch has signed after eight years in Dallas. First time Pro Bowler a year ago. She didn't become a whole time NFL starter until his seventh year in the league. Just a lot of time back in camp in the preseason. Here's a nice open punt return by Roberts into that Jacksonville territory. Takes a hard hit inside the 30. Telvin Smith laying the shoulder. 37 yards on the return by Roberts. You know, last year the Washington Red Skins special teams is by far the worst in the NFL. Already had a punt block for a touchdown last week, but today they've been outstanding on special teams. Look at the return by Roberts, helping to set up great field position for Kirk Cousins and the offense, making one miss there. Look at the blocking down the field. His ability to cut back, picking up even another block there. Been a really good play and good show with special teams today by the Washington Red J.J. Watt also blocked a point after try. Special teams that has just been a disaster for this team the last couple of years. First and ten. This will be a false start. This will play again. False start. Offense, number 77. It's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. Sean Laval, the fear left guard. Former third-round Cleveland coming over on a four-year deal as a free agent in March. You see the penalties, eight of them against Washington. Right, FedEx Field in Washington, Spirita, Solomon Wilcox, and our entire CBS crew. Robert Griffin, third, carted off the field early. Left leg injury, Deshaun Jackson, left shoulder, both players done. 21-7 Washington, here's Cousins on first and 15. Arizona has his man a snap. Garcon catches it. And now they say complete. Dan Grant's on the coverage, and what was that close? Wow. I thought this was had by Pierre Garcon. Look at Grant. He gets help from the safety. Watch. At the last minute, right? Oh, no. It, it is Grant who's able to pull the arms down of Pierre Garcon. Watch the break here. Pulling that back arm down. The hand comes off the ball. Ball comes out. Great recovery by Grant, who was beaten initially on the play. See the consecutive game streak. At least five plus catches. 17 has zero receptions today. That's a new junior. That one picked up and brought down to 30 by Roy Miller. Making the 50th start of his career. Second year Jacksonville player. In his sixth NFL season. Don't you like Jay Grant?
Gruden, though. He's, he's not easing up on these Jag Jaguars with a 14-point lead. Still taking shots down the field. Something he was criticized very heavily for week one. Maybe not taking enough shot down the field. But I think J.J. Watt had a lot to do with that. He was wreaking half in that Redskins backfield last week. Cousins completes to Green. Brought down at the 20, right at the first down marker. Allen Ball there on the coverage. Allen Ball in <laughs> first down Washington. Absolutely. Right side of your screen. Watch Grant come in, number 14. Now Ball, see he's right there in the hip pocket. He's raking. He's doing everything he can to try to get that ball out. But it was just a well played throw from Kirk Cousins. We talk about ball placement that allowed the receiver to make the completion that was exhibit a cousins is 15 of 20 buck 80 a long touchdown to niles ball first and 10 they go punch under the pressure and a wise decision by cousins throw it right at turf under a mid pressure by geno haynes we mentioned injuries well here are the three guys that stepped up today in relief, and all three guys, Solomon, have made a good, good contribution, haven't they? Yeah, uh, you know, Reed is out at the tight end position. Wide receiver, Deshaun Jackson's out. RG3, Cousins, Robertson, Paul. All replacement players playing like the day starters. Ross just had a 37-yard punt return to give him a short field here. Second and 10. Morris, 10 yards. It's at the 15. Lunges forward. Post plus finally brings him down. Six Tough, hard-earned yards as we see what they have done offensively today. Yeah, Cousins led on three drives, three touchdowns, 15 to 21 so far in the game. That ball, seven reception, lead everyone today. And then Andre Roberts, you saw him making plays in special teams. Seeing him on the return game, running the football and then catching it as well. So great results for the Washington Redskins in terms of their total yards. Today, running pass and excellent balance on offense. Nick Gruden lines up Alfred Morris at the top of his screen, split out third and shot. Complete Roberts again. Needed to get to the 10. They are inside that net yards. It'll be first and goal, Washington. You know, Pauls, Niles, Paul, and Roberts, the two leading receivers right now as they're shredding a spread. Defense, both guys making plays. There he is in the slot. Came over from Arizona as a free agent. And I remember talking to him this summer when they signed to Sean Jackson. He says, Hey, I'm gonna get the opportunity to make plays, and boy is getting up today. Former third round draft choice of the Cardinals in 2010. Morris already a couple of touchdown runs and short here by about a yard and a half. Sound also difficult from a defensive standpoint. You Prepare for RG3 all week, and now Cousins suddenly comes in after an injury. Such a, a different style of quarterback. Yeah, we all spark, they've been ideal. Yeah, we even saw early in the game, RG3 making most of his throws outside the pocket, on move. But it's all been from behind center in the pocket for Kirk Cousins. Under Jacksonville, prepared all week for RG3 and some of the anomalies he was going to give you at quarterback position. They're getting none of that today. It's more traditional. After the play was over, unfortunately, by conduct by the offense, number 71. 50 yard penalty from the end of the play, the down pass. It's second and goal. Second penalty called today against Trent Williams. It was a bit of a question mark after shoulder injury limited his practice time this week. Pro bowler each of the last two years has to know better than that. That is the next penalty against the Redskins. Yeah, they've had a ton of those. Still inside the red zone. Second goal for Kirk Cousins. Remember, Niall Paul's been able to get open. Some of those bootleg plays. And they have forgotten about it. Ryan Grant in motion on second and goal from the 16th. Cousins has time complete. Looking in the direction of Grant again. Surrounded by three white jerseys. Take a look at the coverage, look into his left side. You see the break there, he anticipated a little bit sooner on that move from Grant, who broke over the middle just late. 
Ninth lay of the drive. A Trent Williams penalty looming off the march here. Forces him to line up outside. With 15 on third and goal. And a trap play Lou pulling no one. Sent Derek Barnes. Hard hit against Helou. And now the field unit comes on. A big blitz coming off the corner, the slot corner. I think it was Will Blackman. He came in, set in the A's. They had more defenders head back to field for the Washington Redskins than they would have liked. So here is Kai Forbath, the third year man out of UCLA. Seven. 20-47, Washington, eight and a half to play third quarter here as we return to the next field. You see the scoring drive that Trent Williams unsportsmanlike penalty. Doing bench. Jackson goes to the end zone as Trace Way boots it. Jordan Topman will not play it. And Jackson will have it at 20 when we come back. You're watching the NFL on CBS. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by South Carolina. Without a heart, it's just a machine. DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. And by the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. Beautiful Sunday in mid-September, 24-7, as we welcome you. Spiro Adidas on Wilcox on the entire CBS crew from Washington. And this offense finally able to score late in the first half, continue and make this interesting. 20-47, first to throw is incomplete and ended for Robinson. Just eight one yards, Solomon, of total offense. You wonder at what point if they at least they maybe even just entertain the thought of giving Bortles a look. Keep in mind, had a great preseason. Yeah, yeah Chad Henney's with 15 right now, and then you talk about the preseason Bortles had. If you're Gus Bradley, you have the third overall pick in the draft. At some point, you got to figure out. Well, how much better can he make us at that position? And we'll continue this conversation. Heading on second and ten. But they haven't protected him today. Sack for Washington. It's Ryan Kerrigan. And I think that answers the question. As you take a look at Blake Bortles, talk to Gus Bradley. He says, hey, our team is on a race to maturity. But if you can't block a young quarterback, or protect him, I should say, and block for him, Chad Henney's getting sacked. What happens to the quarterback? What happens to his growth and development if the team around him isn't ready to help carry a young rookie quarterback? Redskins Sean Blitz. Blake Bortles wants none of this. And I'm not so sure you come in. Take a look right here. That's where the pressure. He's got consecutive sacks. Look at him right there. Beating the hands, knocking them down. Cameron Bradfield. Getting around and beating them on consecutive plays. And that's what Gus Bradley is so fearful of. Exposing the young Blake Bortles to that kind of beating early in his career. When the team around him is strong enough to assist in positive development. Kerrigan had a forced fumble in Houston early in the fourth quarter last Sunday to give the offense a chance, and he has wreaked havoc. Settling for Washington's defense. Conversation continues on that Jacksonville sideline. Kerrigan making his impact. 247, Washington. As Kirk Cousins back onto the field. First 10. And the market just outside 37. Cousins complete his first 14 passes. Hasn't been able to hook up with that man. His top wideout, Pierre Garçon. The Big Bang Theory time traveling to a new night. Monday, back-to-back -back episodes. Don't miss a winner, Jim Parsons, as the new season begins Monday, September 22nd. Only CBS. There's Cousins. Came on early. 
After Robert Griffin III was carted off the field, a left ankle injury that's all we told at this point officially by the Redskins. This will be second in. Here's Halu trying to find the edge, brought down to shy of the 39. Obviously, you know, you're excited Solomon as a Redskins fan to be up trying to end this long losing streak, but uh, that'll be the big bit of news that these fans are waiting for on Griffin's angle. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of talk in this town about the job done by Kirk Cousins. But we also have to say that before he looked at the game, Robert looked, great. looked really good. I mean, he, he connected on that throw down the field to Sean Jackson. They took it away. And then he had a nice throw to convert the third down play to set up scoring drive when Kirk Cousins came in the game. And Griffin looked good running the football in the first down rush. Cousins under the rest, completes to Lou. Needed to, to the 48, looks like he's a couple of yards short. Market comes in. Tackle made by Josh Evans. Penalty thrown behind line of scrimmage. Looks like it's against the Redskins. Holding by the office, number 77. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is fourth down. With Sean Laval, one of the newcomers to this Washington offensive front. Gus Bradley, such infectious personality, the 48-year-old seven-year coach. I think Harrell is trending upwards. But uh, it has been a brutal day today offensively for Jacksonville. Six sets and a game 70 yards of total offense. Just swagging on the punt, another mark with one. Mike Brown saves fair catch. And as that one sails out of bounds inside the 20. A lot of yellow hankies today. There's Chad Henney, just 6 of 13 through the year. Game clock stopped at 5.41 to play, third quarter. Illegal formation by the offense. Number 55 was not on the line of scripts. That five-yard penalty is added to the end of the run. First down. Timeout. It's Adam Hayward, the back linebacker, so any back onto the field, it's just a 29-yard punt for Way. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Just For Men Mustache and Beard. Just you and the look you want. And by Verizon XLTE on America's largest, most reliable network. Well, week two continues later today on CBS, and for some of you on Fox, then tonight, Sunday Night Football on NBC, and tune in tomorrow for Monday Night Football on ESPN. A good one, Philadelphia trying to go to 2-0 and against Andrew Luck and Indianapolis. Here at FedEx, 24-7, Watson in front. Chad Henney in this offense, if you've just joined us, seven yards of total offense. Henney has been set seven times. And as you see right there, just four first downs. Good field position guard here from the 30. Pump fake goes near set incomplete. They haven't called his name much. Solomon since that early drop. Hearns had what could have been a very long touchdown. This is the second time he targeted. Yeah, Hearns got off such a wonderful start as we talked about. He did have one catch in the game today. His first two catches of his NFL career occurred last week. In the very first quarter against the Eagles, both went for touchdowns. First time that's happened in NFL history, but he has done much since. See his numbers last week. First to go as a receiver with 100 yards receiving, two touchdowns since Jimmy Smith in 2005. That's the other rookie wide out, Marquise Lee. Three years start of USC, one of three rookies to start on offense last week. Now, Jed Fish is sort of downgraded to doing only what you saw right there. Quick short throws because the offensive line can't hold up in pass protection. As a play call, as you take a look at Fish, there's only so many things you can do when you can't block them and have your protection hit up on front. Now third, so let's see if they can keep the quarterback clean. 
major injuries on third down. There were two of 14 last Sunday, just one of eight today. Penny has time near side. That turns first down. They'll mark it out past the 40. Only the fifth first down. Yards and Hines with his first catch. See, the protection is good. The quarterback could find receiver. Even with the underneath coverage as tight as that. Very small window, and Henny had the time and protection to get the ball over there. Now watch it. He's gonna come right over here. Now take a look. See? Clean pocket, great vision, accurate throw. Hines, the undrafted rookie out of Miami. That pass incomplete, intended for Brown. Jacksonville will have it. Second and ten. Let's get an update. A lot of excitement about Sam Watkins, Coach. Yeah, there's his first touchdown of his career right here. It's going to be 12 yards from E.J. Daniel. He already has 101 yards on the day. A drive set up by C.J. Spiro, 47 yard run, 23-10 Miami. Back to Spiro and Solly. Oh. Well, hit you beat Buffalo. It's starting to make some noise, Jay. Second and ten. Henny again under pressure. Unable to locate Brown. As we get a marking now behind the line of scrimmage. Looks like it'll be a hold against the Jaguars. Oh, that flag came out late. On the fullback, I believe. Holding. Offense. Number 45. That penalty is line. He's over the play. It's third up. That's the fullback, Will Tau Fall, the Cal products. 24th start in his career. When you saw the look on Gus Bradley's face, just didn't look happy on that sideline third and ten. The time was in his punter come out on the field. The offenses split all day. Ugly third down numbers through the first two weeks. Westgate coming again. And you know, we can talk about the offensive line all day. On this one, it's on the veteran quarterback, Chad Hitting. You know, read it well. See, he comes to the left. See, the ball has to come out right there. You can't get caught holding it. You know they're bleeding. You can't block them all. It's three-step drop. Ball's got to come out. And if they're not there, you got to just throw it away. You can't continue to hold on to the football and take sacks. Ryan Clark, the longtime Pittsburgh dealer safety. After his year run at Pittsburgh, sexton here in Washington, getting there first. And then the support from Keenan Robinson and a number of other Redskins defenders. 24 to 7, you're watching the NFL on CBS. Well, the anatomy of a pass run. Eight times that Washington defense has gotten to any that ties a Jacksonville record for sacks allowed. Yeah, the fifth score they get just opened the floodgates on Chad who's been hit, harassed, now hurting after eight sacks on the day. And still have time left play. No doubt he'll be in the world tomorrow, icing up every inch of his body. So Washington defense, they go deep down the near side. It's incomplete intended for Robinson. The Redskins defense the last year went 30 of 32 in the low. Looking at that right elbow, it looks like it'd be... No, he'd be hurt. Yeah, there's no way. How much can one man take? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and so for all those fans in Jacksonville, why aren't we playing Blake Bortles? You do not want to subject a young quarterback, first-round pick, third overall, to that kind of pounding early in his career. To really go to rest the development of your young quarterback. Washington ready has had to deal with their quarterback. Started going down Griffin. Cousins. Completing and now they say it is caught. And Pierre goes on finally with his first reception, goes for a dozen, and Washington for down. Yeah, Garcon had a chance to catch one deep early, and Kratz is able to pull the arms off of it. But when he holds on to, as you said, for his first catch of the day, he's he's got a string of, of games where he's had five or more receptions. And so far today, only getting his first one here in the second half. 17 straight. A Redskins ah! record. Last year led the NFL with 113 receptions. Morris on first down. Getting the 50. Let's get you an update. Back to New York. Giants and Cardinals. 
Ted Ginn make a habit of this, Bill. Yeah, here it is, 14-13 game. Giants have to punt. And the guy who's done this four times in his career takes it, makes one guy miss. The quickest distance between two lines is a straight one. Ted Ginn Jr. takes it. No one can catch him. 71 yards. And the Arizona goes back on top, 19-14. Spiro and Solomon. We saw Arizona come back against San Diego last Monday night. Try to do it again on the road. It is trouble for Morris banging through that Jacksonville defense. Close to 45, close to the 40. Eight yards. And another rush for Washington first down. You know, I don't know that we call Alfred Morris one of the more underrated running backs in the league anymore. <laughs> There's no way. He's underrated with runs like that. He just keeps you as a play caller if you're Jay Gruden. He keeps you on schedule. He allows you to have giving him the ball to come back and call easier plays on first and ten where you have balance and can go either way with the football. Fake the end around Cousins of first and ten. Has his man. It's incomplete. Niles Hall has had a career day to this point. Wow. Just dropped it. Can we talk about the run from Alfred Morris on the previous play? It allows Jay Groot to get creative like this. All the fake stuff, but this is the guy that you gotta watch. See, all the razzle-dazzle, and that's how Paul Puslusny bites, and they get now Paul wide open. He just doesn't make the catch. But it started with the run game from Alf Morris, setting the table for your play card and Jay Groot to design creative plays to get now Paul open on the back end. Paul, the former fifth-round pick of, out of Nebraska. Cousins on second and ten. And going far side line. It's caught. That's the rookie crack. Good pick up the time between Cousins and the first year wide receiver. Watch first Grant. Out of yeah, watch Grant. Now see, Jacksonville's done this all day, Spirit. See right there, just get him out of bounds. Make the tackle. Sometimes as defenders, you can get greedy going for the ball that you don't make the simple play. And the play that you can easily make is by pushing them out of bounds right there, and there will be no yards after the catch. Kirk Cousins now over 220 yards for the year. 19 oh! for 29. This will be the second play of the day. Give it more to play. Clock continues to run as we come up on the final 60 seconds of the third quarter. Well, they call themselves Scorpion. For the smartest people in the world work together and fight threats against America. Inspired by a true story, Scorpion premiered Monday, September 22nd. Only CS. Kind of like you and I every weekend. <laughs> smart guys having fun, doing football, right? Traveling across this beautiful nation of ours. Say one smart guy. I, I can't take it better. <laughs> 26 yard line is where they spot it. Second and seven. Say that he doesn't mind split carries, but well, he said, Look, Roy Hill has been very good for this team, and you'll keep him fresh with running backs taking such a pounding in the NFL. Yeah, Alfred Moore said that the running backs here with the Redskins, there's two things they want to accomplish on every play one, no negative gains, okay, no lost yards, and he says the other is to go 100% on every run. So if we don't have the energy or stamina to go hard, we can easily call in the other guy. Quarterbacks can throw the receiver open. That time he threw Grant open, and Grant just extends. Gets the ball for a 21-yard completion. Quarterback and receiver were loving it. Start of the fourth quarter here at FedEx Field. All Washington till this point. 2047. Their defense has bruised and battered Chad. Ah! Looking for more as they try to place game away early as we start the fourth. Alfred Morris trying to go up the gut. Two players that they found solid in that 06 draft. Morris taking the 
the sixth round, Cousins, the fourth rounder at the Michigan State. Look at the Hogs up front, getting movement. And Alfred Morris taking advantage of it. Talk about that 2012 draft. They got this guy late in the 2012 draft. They take RG3, the first round pick. They get Kirk Cousins that same year, and they get Alfred Morris right around the sixth round. And it just it turns out to be a mega bust in the draft. For the race. I love playing the drive cousins that are fast far side. Caught touchdown. And Anaya is Paul again as his career day continues. Well, you know, he popped that one. He had to reward his order back. He said, you know, you just put it over there, and I'm gonna catch Rosinski, number 14. Watch this. See, they're playing the ball, trying to look back in. That's just like a power forward going up for a rebound and tight coverage coming down with it. Charles Barkley was in our studios earlier today. Be very proud of that catch by Miles Paul. Such a crazy sport, isn't it? The NFL Griffin goes down early, then Deshaun Jackson. There was so much apprehension in the stadium early in this game. And you look up, they've got three points early in the fifth quarter. Two by Forbath is good. Eight catches, 99 yards for the fourth year man out of Nebraska. Now it's Paul. Well, Niles Paul basking in the glow of second straight career afternoon. 99 yards receiving. You see the drive 11 plays, 65 yards. It with the touchdown pass from Cousins to Paul. Cousins now 243 yards and a couple of touchdown throws. Jordan Tucker watches it to the end zone. Touchback, they'll mark it at the 20. Coming up this Thursday, your football week starts here. When the Tampa Bay Bucks take with the Atlanta Falcons. Big matchups go prime time. Thursday night football on NFL Network and CBS. For Solomon's the dilemma now, you know, if it does grab Jacksonville, as you see the total yard, it's just uh, as one-sided as you'll ever see at this level. First and ten play, here's Gerhardt, who has had really a nothing day, no pack on this game. But obviously the calls will be the deep portals, what the youngster can give you, but if they can't protect the quarterback, how could you ever consider putting him in? I, I don't know that you can, and even Gus Kelly, we talked to him about it. I said, is there ever a reconsideration? Redshirting him and maybe playing him based on what you saw in preseason. He says, you know, it was vanilla defenses. He said, we allowed him to relax and go. That's why he played at a high level. But this is a different deal what you see here today. Penny has already been sacked eight times. Penalties came in. It looks like this will be against the defense. As the Redskins just keep on coming. Illegal hands to the face by the defense. Number 99. That's a five-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Let's get you another update back to New York, Carolina, and Detroit. Carolina backing up hands talk. Here's Jonathan Stewart, two-year run, the captain of this uh, 70-yard touchdown drive, highlighted by a tremendous 20-yard 20 20-yard catch by Calvin Benjamin. Two-point play was good. 21-7, Carolina. Though Sally, I don't think you want to fire up and down the consumer. Back to Spiro and Solomon. <laughs> That's right. That kid of Benjamin is one heck of a player. He's showing a big time in Carolina, J.D. That's sleeping dogs loud, right? That's right. First and 10 after the penalty. They mark it up at the 28-yard line. Looks like Washington was out of sorts defensively. They'll take their first timeout of the second half. We talked about the long losing streak. Nine straight dating back to last season. They lost their final eight games a year ago. Longest slide since the 1961 season. This was their last win, Sally, early November of 2013. Here yeah, against the San Diego Chargers, the game right here at home. But the Bucks stopped there. And since then, they've lost nine in a row. Only one under their new head coach, Jay Gruden. I'm sure he's saying, hey, those previous eight, they're not one idea. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he's got to come in and snap that streak because you're talking about a streak that's Look at that. 
Nine consecutive loss, the longest in 50 years for this proud Redskin franchise. Robinson on the pitch. And now we will await the penalty call. Robinson, the third year man out of Michigan State, signed a free agent contract in the offseason. And these officials have had an awfully busy day. There was no foul on the play for defense outside. He was on the play with an interception by Washington. First foul. Chad Henney's nightmare continues. Robinson is able to pick it up. He ran guys with the quarterback. Chad Henney all the way to this. See, Henney's going to come here and watch at the top of the screen. He's looking all the way. And so you're able to come off the hash mark, jump in front of the route run by Hearn. Look, 88 Hearns, he led him right there to the intercept. You've got him to hold the safety. Henney is a veteran of the National Football League. He knows that, but clearly was a great indicator for Robinson to jump that and come away with the pick. First that Henny is thrown this season. Eventually 8-6 ah! for Washington's defense. Wide Wait, performance hey, hey. from Jim Haslam's unit. First turnover from either team today. First to play doesn't go for much, Alfred Marks. Inside the 30, right back to the original line of scrimmage tackle made by the Roy Reynolds, the third-year linebacker. You know, one of the things when we talked to Gus Bradley about his quarterbacks, he said the one thing we need, Henny, is he's got to protect the football. Then he said the other is he's got to go seize victory, go out and win ball games. The one thing he wanted from Henny that he really liked is his seven-year of experience. He said it allows him to play fast. Right now, the experience isn't working for him, as you saw in that interception. And Partly because he's hit, hurried, and harassed all day long. It's Darrell Young has a touchdown reception earlier, and Young looks like he's shaken up. Hard hit at the end of that play, and now a late market comes. It was Winston Guy Jr. Yeah, and that was a late hit, mm. and it was to the head, and he was in a defenseless position. Winston Guy Jr. came and laid the lick, and he, had, you know, he was already down. You don't want to even involve the helmet or lay a lick to a player in that position he was clearly defenseless this is the part that we talk about needing to get out of the game and defend defenders have to really be aware young the fifth-year fullback out of villanova entered the nfl undrafted back in 2010 he's 27 years of age watch it here he's going to be on the ground he's going to hit the ground and watch 22. Hmm. That's scary. Hit to the head of the defenseless player. That's half the distance no. from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Timeout. Now, and the key is he didn't come in to wrap up the tackle. He came in and led with the head to the head of a defenseless player. We'll be back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Lincoln Motor Company and the first ever NKC. The new Samsung Galaxy S5. The next big thing is here. And by the new dollar cravings menu at Taco Bell. Live Moss. There's Redskins fullback Darrell Young finally able to come off the field after a very dangerous hit late in a defenseless position. It was Winston Guy Jr., the starting safety out of Kentucky, coming in late here in 20. Two. Right there. See, right there. That's a late to the back of the head. It wasn't an attempt to wrap up and secure attack in any way, shape, or form. You know, many of the players for the Redskins, they had words for Winston Guy Jr. And, you know, rightfully so. I know he's a young player, but he's got to be able to understand the rules that don't protect the safety of players. Here's a look at real speed. Wow. He, he could really injured player there that's it's uncalled for and of all the Redskins players who joined that guy Ryan Clark had to be separated visibly upset after that play first down run from Mars Ryan Clark coming over with 
mentioned from the Steelers. Instantly commanding respect in that Washington locker room. Looks like Young is okay, at least for the moment. And we can't say it enough. There is a change of culture happening in the National Football League with guard to safety. Being able to take the head out of it. You know, as a kid, I remember watching a game where we see Daryl Stingley was hit by Jack Tatum. Jack Tatum hit to the head area in a defensive position. Was paralyzed. Uh, and we don't want that in our game. We have to be able to educate players how you can be a physical player, but we can also protect one another. Second and 12 Cousins. Fade pattern to the corner of the end zone. It's in for Grant. Well, the rookie has had his number called today frequently. And I make complete coverage by Gretz. Yeah, good coverage there. Now, see, he gets his head around, fine ball. To play it while it's in the air. Much better play. Good job by Dwayne Gratz. Gratz, the former third-round pick out of Kentucky, second year in the league. Slowed from the last season by a couple of high ass players. Did fight his way through it, started nine games, played in 11. For Jacksonville, Roy Hallou Jr. into the game, third down back, split, bottom of your picture on third and 12. Cousins never had a chance. Kelvin Smith, the rookie linebacker out of Florida State, coming from the blind side. Oh, they never blocked him. Kelvin Smith, number 50, coming over, look, right here. That's where he comes from, and they just get so wide over there, look. So they have to choose one, leave another, come free. They're able to fool the left tackle on that play, Chip Williams. He helped on the inside. He could have fanned out to left. The pick up Telvin Smith. 42-yard attempt from Forbath. He's been picked. And that continues. They took a three. 34 to 7 in a one sided home opener for the Redskins. 42 yard field goal from Forbath. Gives Washington 34 to 7 lead with 10 plus to play in his fourth quarter. FedEx Field in Washington, home opener for the Redskins, has been a success as they try to end a long nine game lead streak, long active slide. Bell. Jordan Todman takes a meet. Now, this wasn't quite the way that they had envisioned half going to their first win in a long time with the injuries. This was RG3 going down left to ankle, according to the Redskins. Ending his day, part off the field. You see the brace that they put left in on the left shoulder injury sustained by Deshaun Jackson. Never returned. Kirk Cousins, Miles Paul. Two of the guys that stepped in, and it has been a, just a stellar offensive performance. That ball complete to Robinson. Now past the 20, brought down at the 24-yard line. So, again, you don't want to speculate, Solomon, on the injury, but assuming that Griffin's going to be out for a substantial amount of time, what kind of team is it with Cousins? How, how good can they be? Well, it looks like the offense is much more efficient. The passing game certainly is clicking and operating. At a very high level, Jay Gruden now to get his quarterback ready. As we look at an incomplete pass here from Chad Hill. Marquise Lee, the intended receiver. When you look at the NFC, East Dallas looks like they're going to win. They'll get him to 1-1. One one. Giants right now are down 8. They could fall 0-2. We'll see what Philly does tomorrow. But it's just you never know week to week. There's certainly an opening you think Washington could start to develop some consistency with Cousins. Well, the Rams fans is it. It's about to get the pass game going. Because next up, the Philadelphia Eagles. And we know they can score in bunches. Third and fourth play whistle dead. And they just cannot get out of their own way. Ball start. Offense. Number 74. That's a five-yard penalty. It's third down. And Sam Young back up tackle. Come on, as they have made changes. Very young offensive line and very inexperienced offensive line in need of help, in need of improvement in their ability to protect their quarterback. They go three wide receivers on third and nine. Penny, that time to protect over the middle, finds his man Robinson, the rookie inside. 
set at 30. And they finally bring him down at the 25-yard line. Trenton Robinson, who had the pick earlier. 54 yards heading to Robinson. Oh, that's a great protection. And see if he can climb the pocket. Watch him step in the pocket here. He's looking. Vision down the field. Clean pocket. Clean throw from Henny. Proving that if you can protect him. And then look at Robinson on the back end, number 15. Gets beyond the defensive back. And then able to make a play. First play that they have won today in Washington territory. It's Denard Robinson on the reception inside the 20. You mentioned some of the youth which team this remade offensive line that just has been marginally ineffective today. Unable to protect the quarterback. Eight sacks for and, Washington. And the more veteran right tackle, Bradfield's been taken out of the game. He's been waste. He badly on back-to-back plays earlier from Ryan Kerrigan. A couple of sacks. So it's hitting. Ready to play first down run inside the 15-yard line. Clock continues to run inside of nine minutes. This team that last year won just four games Solomon. It really was about survival. Year one under Bradley, their first year in general manager David Caldwell. It felt like they were ready to take the next step, but a lot of questions surrounding this offense. He throws, it's incomplete. Great pressure Murphy. coming from Trent Murphy. Yeah, Trent Murphy off the top of the screen. And we talk about the absolute joker. He beat 76, just lifted against Murphy. Murphy's able to knock those hands down, get to the quarterback, and he's lucky that one wasn't intercepted. Well, you don't want to be in that film room, Tom Morning. For an offensive lineman for Jacksonville, would not be a pleasant place to be. Tied a Jacksonville record for most sacks of that game. Here's Toby Gerhardt. Well, they fell by 21 to nothing. At that point, you kind of abandoned the run game. When he's had a chance to run, he just hasn't had much of an impact. Six the yards that time through the air. Yeah, it's zero. The offense will affect so much what you want to do on an offense, whether it's only the football. And does Bradley, oh, he wants to create a prison team that can pound you in the running game, that can hit play action pass, but if you don't have a physical, talented, veteran offensive line, it makes any of that just about impossible. Jordan team in the second year running back out of Connecticut into the game. They get the heavy again. And it's Frank Curse. Now their backup nose tackle after the injury to Barry Cofield. Chad Henney already thinking about getting on the airplane. Deep to blind that are like shots. They smell blood in the water. They start getting sacks. They smell and want more. And they pour in on the quarterback. Poor Chad Henney. He's been bait for these sharks on the defensive line for the Redskins today. He's got to check in for body parts after this game. Keep him making sure that everything is still intact. Yeah, most of them are soon to cross this field. 36 yard field goal attempts from Scobie. And it's good. So Bradley just says, let's get some points on the board. 34 to 10. With seven minutes to play. It has been a jailbreak for Washington defense. Timeout. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Subway Restaurants. Fuel your training routine at Subway. Subway, train hard, fresh. And by Progressive, comparing rates to help you save. Now that's Progressive. Survivor is back. An all-new set of Cataways competing against their loved ones for a million dollars. Survivor premieres Wednesday, September 24th, only CBS. Nine sacks today. Sorry, son. Yeah, I was say, do they let quarterbacks on that show? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about surviving, right? <laughs> Most sacks for the Redskins in game since 1980. At nine against the St. Louis Cardinals, their team record is 10. Set back in the team 7 uh, He has survived today. A lot of courage.
you know, in the quarter and playing that quarterback position, particularly when your offensive line's porous. You can't say enough. Washington the football inside Jacksonville territory up 34 to 10. Right, watch the Angelo Hall. It's the veteran. He got off the hop. Look, he attacks the ball, then get down with it. Hall the 11th year vet. Three time roll bowler. So Cousins back onto the field. What a day for Cousins. 22 of 33, 250 yards. Two touchdowns. Did not throw a pick. This is Silas Red, the key runner at USC. Undrafted. First time we've called his number. So Cousins came on. And Sally got right to it. This was his first throw after the injury to G3. Yeah, he engineered three consecutive drives that ended with touchdowns once he came in for RG. Even stellar. Two touchdown passes. The thing you like the most is the offense picked up. He hasn't turned the ball over. But very good at putting his offense in the advantageous place to be successful. Second and seven. Red again coming back inside the 30. First down for Washington. This has been a hotly debated issue. You know, who should be quarterback? We know really it's still Griffin's show. The injury will determine, but yeah, there have been some people within the organization. Joe Theismann, who is in the stadium tonight, who's been very vocal after the preseason, saying, look, Cousins should be the starter instead of Griffin. And you know, no, good friend of mine, he's won a Super Bowl around here. You know, when he, when he speaks, people listen. And quite frankly, the tape doesn't lie. I, I think things that Joe said, the film kind of shows that. And we're seeing it before our very eyes here today with Kirk Cousins. Well, everything else, just combination. If you hope for the best, the Griffin's ankle is okay. She was caught at the field. What a hit. Red taking on tacklers at the 20. Wow. Mm. He is running hard. That time just ran right over Dakota Watson. Eight yard run. Red was a kid that, remember, he went to Penn State, transferred to USC. And this kid was highly recruited coming out of high school. He played very well at the collegiate level at both schools. And you see, once he gets the ball in his hand, he, he can make things happen. Team with Marquise Lee, the Jacksonville rookie wide receiver at SC last year. Part of that vaunted offense. And it's short, they mark it outside the 20. Red looking for Daylight. First needed to get to about the 18 yard line. Block the piece to run, 430 to play. And it's Second looks like injured Redskin is Sean Laval, the left guard. One time Pro Bowler. I beg your pardon, the former third round pick of Cleveland. Signed that three year $17 million contract in March. And this is the last thing they want, certainly this year of the game, a day that has been marred by injuries. Not only Griffin, but uh, Deshaun Jackson, left shoulder injury back in the first half. This offensive line played really well today. But you can see if I'm being jammed back right there, then he hits the deck. See, there he is, 77. See, watch when he gets the push right there. And it just falls down and can't tell what's going on after that. Laval very slowly, gingerly walks off the field. Open to open up some holes for rookie runner Silas Red, who has four carries, by the way. First thing we've seen him today, 24 yards. At over eight yards a pop. Josh Larebus comes in for Laval. Larebus, third-year man out of SMU, former third-round pick in 2012. Part of that draft class that I talked about earlier. Producing Griffin, Cousins, and Edward Morris. And we're going to move inside the four-minute mark. Sally, the pendulum swings in the NFL at such an incredible level week to week. The air 
for Washington after the loss last night in Houston. Nine straight losses. Griffin goes down, and now you, know, you get to one and one with Philadelphia next week on the schedule. And so things will get awfully interesting early in the year. Oh, absolutely, and Jay Gruden and his office was criticized for creating explosive plays, and they had plenty here today. Gruden's going to get his first win as Redskins coach. First appearance at home, first win for Washington since November of last. Just to talk about Gruden, Sally, you talk about a tough place, tough seat, tough owner to break into yeah. as rookie head coach. You think about some of the big names that have come through here. Marty Schottenheimer, of course, Joe Gibbs, Steve Spurrier, Mike Shanahan. None of those guys, some of the titans in the sport, lasted here more than four years. Yeah, and, and to Gruden now, I think the organization has changed. You know, uh, Bruce Allen, the general manager in the front office, they understand what, what they want. And I think the hiring of Jay Gruden proves that, you know, he's a head coach, he's a former offense coordinator, can call his own plays, he's got real good design um, that can really help give this team some stability. And, you know, not just having one quarterback from what appears that they two <laughs> now with Kirk Cousins playing the way that he is. Uh, I think they have an opportunity to really have um, – continued success with Gruden. It does start with the development of the quarterback, the overall offense, and then with Jim Hazlitt as a defense coordinator, this defense can also play at a high level. Well, it's a fan base that is so starved for a winner. It's one winning season here over the last five years. 3-13 and 13 a year ago, after winning the NFC East, RG3 with that dazzling rookie campaign in 2000. 12. It looks like Washington is finally and the long losing streak. This will be third and eight from just outside the 15. Silas win. Be well short need to get to about the seven. Silas has come in already 26 yards rushing for him. That more than what the Jaguars have on the ground for the entire game. <laughs> Incredible. There's Scott Henney. You have to feel for him. Nine sacks. As Washington's defense all over him today. As he talks it over, Blake Bortles, his rookie teammate. Two minutes morning. NFL on CBS. Coming up next, the week two action around the NFL continues. The NFL on CBS will bring you the Chiefs and the Broncos, or the Jets taking on the Green Bay Packers, also Texans and the Raiders. Check your low listings as week two in the NFL continues. 34 to 10. If you just join us, an eventful Sunday like Jake Gruden is going to go for here. The fourth and seventh play instead of sending out the field goal unit. Both teams entering the day 0-1. Skin 17-6 defeat in Houston last week. Jacksonville long to 17-0 second half lead. And Hillary. Silas Red coming back, and he is in. Everyone came in on the X. This is just an incredible ride. Right, he gets outside of the unblocked defender who's the end end of the line of scrimmage. Then outruns everyone to the end zone. Watch how they all get going one way, then he'll come here and get back outside there. That's what we're saying. Get outside that end man on the line of scrimmage. You find your way to the end zone. It's just incredible. They don't even have to block all for Silas Rick. That'll make the coach smile. How about Silas Red, the 13-yard touchdown run, first in his career. First time we see him today, eight rushes, 42 yards, and the touchdown. You can't say anyone expected this. 41-14. Right Washington. There. Look at that. That's just incredible. 
Uh, this Washington Redskins team, they, they've got some tap now. I mean, you, you put Robert Griffith III on ice along with Deshaun Jackson, Jordan Reed, and still come out and put these kind of plays and then bring in your third running back at Silas Red. And he acts like he wants to be the star. So 41 to 10, you score. See the scoring drive, eight plays, 41 yards in just under five minutes. Officially, they call it a 14-yard run. Redskins today, six trips to the red zone, full touchdown, Salmon, and two field goals. Well, it's just, I think it was good play calling and great design by Jay Gruden. And then flawless execution by the quarterback, Kirk Cousins. Kick for Travis Way, fielded by Tottenham, a yard deep in his own end. Tottenham getting to the outside, across the 20, and tackled outside the 25-yard line. You know, one of the ways that a quarterback, you can tell they're operating at a high level of efficiency. When you complete 22 of your passes, eight different receivers, and you get tight end involved, and young receivers like Ryan Grant, a newcomer like Andre Roberts, his first year with the football team you're spreading it around to a lot of different guys it means a quarterback can see the field he's going through his progression and throwing the ball accurately and on time here's Harry sick number 10 and that will tie a franchise record for Washington remarkable this is a game that would make Dex Manley and Charles Mann smile. <laughs> just repeatedly getting to the quarterback. Sally, just get back to Cousins. The other thing that, that makes it so interesting, Pierre Garçon really didn't contribute much today. Deshaun Jackson went down the top two receivers. This kind of adds to the impressiveness of what Cousins did in relief Griffin. And he thrown his back foot, finding Gerhardt. A set down play. Blocks it is to run now at a minute. To see what the Redskins defense has done today. I remember playing in a game where we had 10 acts and I was in Pittsburgh. Dick LeBeau was the coordinator. Our Bill Collar in our NFL Today studios was the head coach. I remember him telling Coach LeBeau, just call him off, Dick. Enough. Call him off. A little later, I don't know if Hazlitt is, is thinking in that way. I hope they gave you a couple of days off. We <laughs> practice that week is uh, Marcus Whistle the plate. Ryan Kerrigan has four of the ten Washington sacks. Career day for the fourth-year linebacker and former first-round pick out of Purdue. Had that force foam early in the game in the fourth quarter in Houston last Sunday. Ball start. Offense, number 65, five-yard penalty. Still third down. Jacksonville has elected to take their first time out of the half to avoid the 10-second runoff. That's the rookie guard. Third-round pick out of Miami, Brandon Linder. Jaguars traded up to draft him in the third round. For all kinds of questions for this offensive line. And if they can't figure it out, it's going to be another long year for Jacksonville. Redskins spin their ears back again. Here they come. Complete. Deflected. Intended for Mike Brown. And he has been just blanketed by that Washington secondary. Keep in mind, Redskins are going to have Brandon Merriweather back next week. It's two games. Suspension is over. Will end after today. Pari Rambo has struggled in his absence. But suddenly they get to one and one. Showing all signs of success with their offense. There's Jim Haslett, defensive coordinator who came here in 2010. Hold over for Mike Shanahan and Stephen, a guy who knows Jay Gruden very well. Coached together in the UFL with the Barber of the Tuskers. Hey. Fourth down, play to go for it to Hearns, but he's all short. About two yards short, looks like Hearns is hurt. Are you 
I hope he's okay. But you can't say enough about the way this. You know, we talked enough about Gruden and the offense. <laughs> this defense for the Redskins, they really poured it on. They came on and just could see the momentum and confidence begin to build. As Alan Hearns is, is down. Hearns, the young man who we talked about earlier, Stork. NFL debut last Sunday in Philly. Looks like it's the left leg that they're looking at the man buckled underneath him. Writhing in pain. And we have seen some hard NFL hitting in this game today. That was Dukey and Nacho coming in. Signed off waivers from Denver. Former starting safety for the Broncos. So Hearns will be helped off the field. And it's been that kind of day for Jacksonville. 41 to 10. And now have to watch one of their young up-and-comers helped off the field. This Jacksonville offense, just eight first downs today. Matching the number of punts. Cousins will take a knee, and this one will finally come to them. For the Redskins, their first win since November 3rd, 2013. A nine-game losing streak is finally over. And Kurt Cousins came in, played one well of a football game. He was more than efficient, did a good job of distributing the ball, but you can put 41 points on the board for your offense, and everyone wanted to see more offense from these Washington Redskins. He's got to be very pleased with what he's done, coming in to play for Jay Groot to help him get, as you said, that first win of his career. Coming up next week, too, we'll continue. Some of the games around the NFL, Kansas City and Denver. And some of you will see Jets, Green Bay, or Houston in Oakland. Your final score, Washington 41 and Jacksonville 10. Denver Solomon Wilcox, producer Vic Frank, our director Chris Spencer Spiro Vitas, saying so long from Washington. You've been watching the NFL on TBS.